Welcome to Glasgow Rangers Nation. I am Owen James. This is your Rangers News Channel, guys. We are back with another video uh, with our brand brand new uh, Ranger, Glasgow Rangers Nation logo. Here it is, guys. Hope you like it. Uh, it is there to obviously reflect the British nature of Rangers with the British background and British lion, but also the fact that the British lion is carrying the saltire of Scottish flag as well to reflect the Scottish heritage of our great team. Well, look, I wanted to get some clarity over this whole financial situation surrounding Rangers. You know, if you look at the situation, it, it is very, very much, you know, chaotic. I think that's the right word. Now, there is that joke, isn't there? The classic joke, which is if you want to know something about Rangers or Rangers finances, ask a Celtic fan, uh, as they seem to be the experts on Rangers finances, Rangers, uh, everything. You know, they are the geniuses, apparently. They know everything about us. Their obsession knows no bounds. But I thought I'd, you know, actually go out there, do some research. Uh, find some information from football finance experts, people who actually know what they're talking about, people who actually study this game, people who actually look at the financial situations across Europe and across clubs and, and base their judgments on sound financial sense rather than on one-eyed bigotry towards your city rivals. Now, look, we know that down south, there's lots of English clubs that have been, the been you know, uh, evacted inappropriately when it comes to finance and have been you know have been in breach of psr ffp whatever you want to call it everton nottingham forest obviously spring to mind there leicester city as well this obviously although they appear to have got away with it um in addition to that of course you know you've got a situation where you've got to work obviously work within your means you've got to be financially responsible you've got to obviously you know buy within your means, pay wages within your means, and obviously not take the club into a financial meltdown as happened in 2012. Now, we know that there are some unalienable truths, um, some things that are just plain facts about our club at this moment in time. Other, I mean, it's a mess. That's kind of a fact opinion kind of thing. But we know that the only way to get players in now is to sell players. That is standard okay that is known that we cannot afford to bring in any other players until players go off the wage bill the wage bill is too high the squad is too big it would make not make any financial sense to just go out there splash the cash bring in two or three players pay them big wages add them to an already overbloated squad and an already overbloated wage bill Yes, the wage bill has come down by around about £200,000 a week, which is positive. Uh, that's what, about £800,000, nearly up to a million possibly a month as well, So, which is, is all positive, you know, that we obviously we've got big wage earners, you know, likes of Lundstrom and Barisic and Kimar Roof and Connor Goldson off our wage books, which is all good news. Now, according to Philippe Clermont, he has held talks with top wage earners. We don't know who, whether that's just the ones that have gone out or the ones that are sitting in the B team at the moment. I don't know. You know, he's not going to come out and say I've spoken to X, Y and Z because that doesn't, you know, he, he's not going to throw players under the bus. You know, he's told those players they're not part of his project, not part of his future plans. Now, we can only presuppose on some of those higher wage earners, you know, the likes, obviously, of those still at the club. James Tavernier, £30,000 a week. Ben Davis, £27,000 a week. Ravi Matondo, £24,000 a week. Tom Lawrence, I think it's £25,000 a week. Todd Cantwell, £25,000 a week. You can only sort of presuppose that he may have had conversations with those players. Now, if those players have been told that they are not part of the plan and not part of the project, then you've got to kind of ask the question is, what effect has that had on player morale? What effect has that had on player effort? And I don't blame uh, Clement for having those talks because I guess when he was having those talks and discussing with those players that fact he was doing it from a position where he thought that they would be out of the door and gone by this point and he could have replaced them however due to the financial situation and in particular the Champions League situation we are now not in a position to do that as quickly or as easily as that now look I think you know had we had a situation. We're going to get to what Adam Williams, who is a financial football finance expert, has had and said. I've got some quotes to share with you, so stick around for those. You know, there's a lengthy list, isn't there, on this squad of players who are on big wages who need to be gone from this football club, who have, for a number of seasons now, let the club down, not played well, not been able to achieve what we need to achieve, which is to win trophies, to beat Celtic on a regular basis. These players have been part of that failure and have proved start this season and in past seasons they are not up to the task of doing what we need them to do players like james tavernier scott wright kieran dow ben davis tom lawrence robbie matondo the list goes on 
But obviously not having the UEFA Champions League money does sort of muddy the waters. Had we had that money, had we had that extra 30, 35, 40 million pounds, you could have afforded to take a loss on some of those players, maybe having that financial buffer of the Champions League money. You could have also perhaps, you know, have afforded to go for bigger, higher replacements, which once they come in, it puts those players in the position to go, well, actually, you know what, I'm not going to get a game, so I do need to move. Perhaps I do even need to take a wage cut to get away from this club where I'm gonna not going to play. But we are now in a situation where without that Champions League money, you cannot go out there and take a loss on these players or buy players who are better who are going to push them out of the team. It just isn't going to happen. So that Champions League situation, I think a lot of fans don't understand the financial disaster it genuinely is. And I've heard that Europa League, it's more our level, but it's not about competing. We are not good luck, guys. Let's get our heads out of the clouds. We are not going to win the Europa League. We are not even going to get to the final. There are teams like Athletic Bilbao, which contain some of the best young players from the Spanish national team. We saw how good they were this summer. Manchester United, who have tooled that team up beyond belief this summer. Tottenham Hotspur, who have, again, gone out and bought quality players like Dominic Solanke uh, in that squad as well. There are a number of high-quality teams in that Europa League who will absolutely wipe the floor with us. Manchester United's reserves beat us, for goodness sake. So, you know, realistically, Europe this season was purely about money, therefore about Champions League. Now, what has finance expert Adam Williams had to say about the current situation? What he has said, which is reassuring to Rangers fans, is there will be there is no need for Rangers to have a fire sale. There is no need to sell prize assets uh, like Jack Butland. There is not a need there to do that. Now, if Rangers were in a financial situation where there was worry about meeting FFP needs, about meeting PSR, whatever, or the club going into financial meltdown, then there would be a need to sell those prize assets like Butland for 10 to 12 million, and that's pretty much it. You know, but there is no need to do that. That is quite clear. The club's finances are not in that place at this moment in time, despite what those on the other side of the city might try and make you believe. Now, Williams has said this. He said the Europa League is worth about 25 million less from the off. So it will have an impact on their recruitment budget. Now, we know that. And this is what I've this is why I've said on repeated occasions. I am sick to death of hearing it's our level. It's more our level. It's where we need. It's where we should be in Europe. I genuinely, genuinely feel physically sick when fans say that it lacks ambition. It just backs up mediocrity. It just is absolutely, it's a pathetic statement. It genuinely is. And the money side of it backs that up. The fact that we will get 25 million less. Also think about this. It puts Celtic another 25 million ahead of us when they are already massively financially ahead of us and puts in a position where it could realistically turn into a Barcelona Espanyol, a Bayern Munich Borussia Dortmund style situation. But the board will have budgeted for that and will have been operating on a worst case assumption as far as this season's budget is concerned. And I think they have as bad a job as the board have been doing of running this football club. I think from the aspect of looking at what we've spent so far, looking at how we've spent money so far and the fact that Philippe Clermont talks about a plan A and a plan B. I think there is clearly a budgetary restriction in place now due to the fact we have not got a Champions League football. He went on to say, had they qualified for the next Champions League stage, the budget may have been scaled up accordingly, which I think is definitely the case. We know that but there was a plan A. The plan A was to spend Champions League money. If we got there, that hasn't, hasn't happened. So therefore, we have to go to plan B or plan C, wherever we are now. Uh, what else did he say? Next quote, that's the wrong one. This is the right one. He said, when they reached the group stage in 22-23, it was about eight to turn over four million. It was... Tied in that in 21-22 when they were in the Europa League, but they reached the final that year and also the Scottish Cup final as well. There isn't really another season in recent years that we can draw a direct financial comparison with because the last time they had an average campaign in the Europa League was affected by the pandemic. But for what it's worth, I don't think that this will necessarily affect Rangers player trading model in terms of sales. Those were going to happen anyway. And Rangers aren't now suddenly in a position where players they had expected to keep now have to be sold. So, you know, even with this lack of 40 million, 30 million, the whatever it may be, the 25 million less than what Celtic are getting, we are not in a position where we are fire selling players. We are having to get rid of players. We are in a position where we can continue to work on setting up this player trading model, which should have been done post 55. John Bennett has been here since then. He's talked about it now. He's only just started talking about it. 
apparently he was talking about it in the past but never followed through on it obviously allowing michael beale to waste all that money last summer as well that was john bennett that clearly shows that there is a real financial mismanagement and a footballing mismanagement from the board of this football club in taking this club forward hopefully now we there is a real drive with Coppen and Clement to set up this trading model to get this trading model up and running so that we can generate substantial funds to go on and buy players in the future to improve the quality of Rangers I think one of the things we all kind of now need to realize is that this rebuild as it is so called is not perhaps the rebuild we were all excited about. We were all excited about a massive summer rebuild, a new team on the park in August, September time, you know, uh, through the Champions League, taking on Celtic, yada, yada, yada. That isn't going to happen now. This rebuild, I think, is a three to four window rebuild, you know, due to the lack of finance at this stage. It's going to take time to generate finance, time to generate income revenue streams to get players into the club. This, I think, we are now probably what? For me, two seasons away from competing with Celtic. And I hate having to say that. I think for the next two seasons, we've got to get used to not winning league titles and looking at it in the long term in terms of rebuilding this football club back up to where it needs to be, which is back at the top of the Scottish game. Once we get over these two seasons, yes, there will be catching up to do. Yes, they probably will be ahead of us in the number of turns and the number of trophies won. And that is horrific to say. And it makes me feel sick to say it. But unfortunately, that is the financial condition this football club has been placed in by awful mismanagement by the board, by bad decisions by previous managers, and by the fact that the, that the board have squandered on numerous occasions the chances to move this club forward, to put it in a position to consistently compete with Celtic on a level playing field. Uh, Williams went on to say the club have lost a lot of players for free in recent years whose resale values were once high, which is all true. Kent, Morelos, Kamara, um, Holanda, Arfield, etc. They must be conscious that they can't carry on like that in the future, especially when their revenue prospects, be revenue prospects, because the significance of Champions League qualifications are pretty volatile. And the fact that Scotland has lost its automatic Champions League qualifying place makes that situation even more volatile. You know, that champion, that the champions of Scotland now are no longer guaranteed that Champions League space. We will need to ensure that we qualify for that to uh, for the Champions League, which, we've, which has been shown in recent years to be slightly more tricky than perhaps we all thought it was going to be. You know, this is a situation where this club now needs to really take stock of where we are at financially, where we are in terms of on the playing field. No matter what has been done off the field in terms of Edmiston House, sports bars, museums, etc., etc., the focus now must be turned solely into the development of the squad on the park. If you are going to market your football club if you are going to have a football club that is attractive to, for people to come and watch and i know that rangers fans are superbly loyal and will be loyal to the end we're all rangers till we die we all bleed uh, red white and blue but we have there is a reputation within the fan base of staying away from games when things are not going the way we want them to go as we've seen in recent weeks so you know, the club need to put a winning product on the field week in, week out. If they're going to attract top numbers, they're going to obviously pull in, um, you know, the crowd sizes that they want over the next few weeks, months and years. Look, this is a situation now where we have really reached a financial crossroads with this fierce call for the, ch by the Champions League. It puts on hold any rebuild plans. It does really show that there is a real need now to get this trading model up running and bring finances into the club so that we can complete the rebuild there is also a need for the board and for the director of recruitment to actively seek and actively push to get these high wage earners off the off the uh, wage bill the likes of james tavernier the likes of kieran dow the likes of tom lawrence ben davis we need to do everything we can to force their way out of the club to push them to the exit door that, that they are actively seeking a move that we are actively seeking them a move and that we are giving ourselves the best possible chances to get them not only off our wage bill but also to bring in finance to actually enable us to go and sign players who want to be at this club and want to help this club move forward guys let me know your thoughts on the what we've heard on what the finance expert Adam Williams had to say and also as well on what I've had to say as regards the financial position. At least I suppose the reassuring thing is this is not a financial meltdown. There is no need for a fire sale. We do not need to sell our prize asset in Jack Butland, which is pretty much our only prize asset at this moment in time. Connor Barron, I suppose, will be. Um, 
good news on that aspect. Anyway, guys, two things you can do for me on the way out. Number one, please smash that like. And number two, remember always, we are the people. Yeah.